Hello friends, it's Miss Ella here again for another Harmony at Home lesson. Today we're going back to Europe where classical music has its roots and we're going to learn about a very special pianist and composer named Clara Schumann. What makes this person so special? She is a woman. What's so special about that, you might wonder? Well, during much of music's history, women did not have the same opportunity as men did to be recognized for their musical talents. We will learn more about Clara Schumann and about the kind of music she wrote when we talk with our guest and friend, Ted Rippert. But first, let's start with our weekly game. Last week we started to play with a pattern of notes we learned two weeks ago. Do you remember the pattern? Did you practice it a little last week? If you recall, we were going up and down with our notes, adding one more note to our pattern each time. Let's sing it together. No, this is the first note. Ready? No, do, re, do, do, re, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, fa, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, so, fa, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. The next thing we did was clap instead of singing me. Remember to keep singing the note me in your head or else you might get lost. Let's do it together slowly. No, first note. Ready? Do, do, re, do, do, re, re, do, do, re, fa, re, do, do, re, fa, so, fa, re, do, do, re, fa, so, la, so, fa, Re, do, do, re, fa, so, la, ti, la, so, fa, re, do, do, re, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, la, so, fa, re, do. Let's do it again a bit faster. Ready? Do, do, re, do, do, re, re, do, do, re, fa, re, do, do, re, fa, so, fa. Re, do, do, re, fa, so, la, so, fa, re, do, do, re, fa, so, la, ti, la, so, fa, re, do, do, re, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, la, so, fa, re, do. Was it easier than last week? Next week we will add something to this pattern. For now, just keep practicing it and try to add the clap to the pattern. Do it slowly and be patient. Learning takes time. The better you know this pattern, the more we can do with it. Now let's get to today's lesson. You already know we are traveling back in time to Europe since that's where classical music started. We traveled back 350 years to the Baroque period and learned about Bach, who wrote music mostly for kings, the wealthy and the church. His music was complex and full of decoration. Then we traveled back 250 years and learned about Mozart and the classical period, when music was more available to common people, members of the middle class, and melodies were simpler. Today we're traveling back 150 years to the Romantic period. We're going to learn about this period in music through the eyes of the composer Clara Schumann. Clara was born 200 years ago. Back then, if you were a little girl, music would be part of your education so that you would grow up to be a young lady who could participate in polite conversations and appreciate culture. Little girls were not expected to grow up to be professional musicians and certainly not composers. Well, Clara was a very special little girl who showed extraordinary talent. She was born into a family of musicians. 
who encouraged her studies and recognized how gifted she was. Her mother was a singer and her father was a famous piano teacher who made sure she received an excellent musical education. At the age of nine, Clara performed publicly for the first time and at the age 11, she traveled with her father through Europe where she played many concerts. These concerts were a great success and Clara became very famous as a pianist. In fact, she was not only the most distinguished female pianist of her day, but the most distinguished of all the pianists. And she was one of the first pianists to perform the music by memory, without looking at the rhythm music. Today, many musicians do that, but back then, this was very unusual. Let's listen to a piece for piano composed by Clara Schumann and see if it sounds different from the music we have heard from the Baroque or the Classical period. I would like you to find at least one different element from the other periods. Remember Bach's very formal music? And do you remember Mozart's music, which was clear and simple? Listen carefully to Clara's piece for piano, a piece she composed and performed when she was a young woman, and try to find something that makes this music sound new. Impressive, don't you think? Could you hear a difference from the music of the Baroque and Classical period? The melody is not formal like Baroque music or as simple as classical melody line. It feels more expressive, as if she were telling us a story. What might that story be telling us about the Romantic period? I think I know someone who can help us answer this question. Wait, you know him too. Let's ask our friend Ted. I'm sure he will be able to tell us something about this period in music history. Hi, Miss Ella. Hi, everyone. So we've reached the Romantic period. You are going to love what you hear from this time, from the 19th century. What does the word romantic mean to you? Does it mean something about love? Well, that's part of it. But as Miss Ella said, in music, what we really mean is storytelling. Because the word romantic comes from the French word for storybook. In the romantic period, the old fairy tales you know, like Cinderella, Hansel and Gretel, they were revived and became very popular. And some of the buildings designed in that period were made to look as though they came out of a fairy tale too. Now, fairy tales have heroes, right? They might be very brave or very sad or very clever and face difficult challenges. 
Romantic music is like that too. It might be very fast or very slow or very anxious or very happy. And who might be the hero of these musical tales? Very often, the hero is the composer herself. Imagine that. In the Baroque period, the hero was the king or God. In the classical period, the hero was the music itself, very clear and beautifully put together. But in the Romantic period, it's often the composer's own feelings we're hearing about. Let's listen again to that music by Clara Schumann. Think about what she might be telling us. Can you hear what she's feeling? Can you hear the actual flow? of her emotions. The composer, and actually the performer too, are now the focus. It can be very personal. And sometimes the way they tell their story makes you, the listener, feel as though it's your story too. things we talked about in the classical period was contrast. Do you remember? Well, in the romantic period, the contrasts get much bigger, and they're really contrasts of emotion. A romantic piece will take you on a journey through different feelings and stories, like reading a chapter book. For instance, listen to some of this symphony by Johannes Brahms, who was a close friend of Clara Schumann and her husband Robert. This beautiful singing melody suddenly takes off on a journey. It takes us through a whirlwind of different emotions, getting more and more excited. Talk about contrast. there were revolutions across Europe. People were actually getting rid of their kings and emperors and creating new kinds of countries. Many smaller countries were born, and their people wanted to celebrate their own folk traditions. That's why those old fairy tales were revived, and the same was true for folk music. Many romantic composers found ways to bring folk melodies and rhythms into their own classical music. Here's an example. The composer Antonin Dvorak, inspired by a Czech folk dance, making for some very lively orchestra music.
a big sound, right? Romantic composers tried to outdo each other in emotion and in sound. It took more and more musicians to make all that sound. Romantic composers asked for more and more brass instruments, which sound so brilliant and could play so loud. With all that sound, composers needed bigger groups of string players and woodwind players too, so the orchestra grew and grew. For Bach in the Baroque period, an orchestra might have had 15 players. For Mozart in the classical period, maybe 25 or 30 players. For Dvorak in that music we just heard, 70 or 75 musicians. And then later with a composer named Gustav Mahler, the orchestra grew to 100 musicians or more. is so much exciting music from the Romantic period. Stories and folk music and big orchestra and big emotions. I'm certain you'll find pieces that seem to tell your own story, your own emotions. That's the magic of this music. I'll see you again when we get to the next period of music. Until then, keep listening and keep playing. Thank you so much, Dad. As always, it's fascinating to hear you talking about music. As Ted said, telling a story and expressing feelings were two very important elements of music written during the Romantic period. Clara Schumann and other composers sometimes did this by choosing written words that moved them and composing music to go with those words. Often the subject of those words was love or nature. Let's listen to one of Clara Schumann's songs. The name of the song is Love's Magic. The lyrics are in German and the song describes the breeze that moves the trees in the forest, the birds singing and the bright sun. Even without understanding the words, I bet you can feel the moment she's describing in this music. understand how talented Clara was as both a musician and a composer. But that's not all she did. In addition to performing and writing music, she had eight children and a husband to take care for, so we can consider her a kind of superwoman. While many people 
nor her husband, Robert Schumann, because he was a famous composer, they may not know how much she helped him and his career by playing his beautiful music in her concerts. This may not sound very unusual by today's standards, but back then a woman's role was very different. Clara Schumann did not let other people's expectations limit her success, and that is an important lesson for all of us. We learn today about one of the most important women in music history, the composer and virtuoso pianist Clara Schumann. We also learned that she and other composers of the Romantic period like Brahms, Dvořák and Mahler wrote music as a way of communicating their feelings. Even today, when we listen to their music, we can sense their emotions. I hope you will take some time this week to search for and listen to more music by these important composers. I will see you next week for a lesson about the brass family of instruments, which became very important during the Romantic period we discovered today. See you next week and until then, make it a musical week!